Good evening. In last week's episode, our intrepid amateur detective, Miss Jean Maple, had successfully decoded the mysterious symbols on the ancient artifact, which revealed the location of a long-lost alchemist formula for making gold. On the way to the remote abandoned hotel on the outskirts of Whitby, the car in which Miss Maple and her assistant Penny Penfold were travelling suffered an unexplained mechanical failure at the crossroads a few miles from their destination. Penfold set off for help, and Miss Maple continued to the hotel on foot. Having found the old cellar and retrieved the formula, she was about to leave when she was confronted by an enormous ferocious dog. Will Miss Maple escape from the paws of death? Who is the mysterious figure in the shadows? Find out now as you listen to the concluding episode presented by the Mudlark Theatre Group of The 39 Red Herrings! Call off your dog. How gratifying that you recognize me, Miss Maple. Here, Preston. Here, sit. Give me the formula. Once again, it seems that there is nothing which you can find, which I cannot take away. How clever of you to realize that this hotel stands over an ancient alchemy's cave. Once I had eliminated all the impossible solutions, this was the only logical place to search. You won't get away with it, you know. That formula belongs... To the highest bidder. I have a private aeroplane waiting in a field nearby, and in a few hours' time I will be a very rich woman. Do you expect me to let you get away that easily? No, Miss Maple, I expect you to die. Shall I kill her now, boss? Put that gun away, Falfetine. I have something extra special planned for my old rival. The police will be here any moment. You cannot escape. Come, come now, resorting to such a theatrical bluff. I thought you could come up with something more inspired. I'm afraid your friend never made it back to town. The countryside around here is full of hidden dangers for the unwary. <laughs> she has had the misfortune to fall down an old mine shaft. She was screaming loud enough to wake the dead when I left. But there is no one to hear her. You fiends! Tut, tut, my dear. Calm down. You will need a clear head to solve your next problem. Problem. What do you mean? Hand me that flask, Falfetine. Thank you. Now, Miss Maple, you are going to take a drink from this flask. My associate will help you. <coughs> Please do not struggle, my dear, or Falfetine will have to knock you out, and I do hate unnecessary violence. <coughs> oh, the poison you have taken works slowly. You have about three hours. But to give you a Spockton chance, there is a file of antidote in the glove compartment of your car. I hope you remembered where you parked. Uh, boss? Not now, Farfetine. You have been a worthy adversary, Miss Mabel. Perhaps if you reach your car in time, we may meet again. But, boss! How dare you interrupt my moment of triumph! The antidote isn't in the glove compartment! What? Well, what is it then? I have it here, boss. You imbecile! I'll take that. Stop her, you fool! <laughs> no, Preston, down! How brave and yet how foolish of you, Miss Maple. You would be wise to give me the antidote, Dr. Moriata. If you willingly show some mercy, I promise that I will see to it that your sentence is reduced. <laughs> you are hardly in a position to buck in. I have already shown you a great deal of mercy. I have prevented Preston from tearing you to pieces. And I do not intend to spend any time in prison. I have covered my tracks very well. Your assistant will not be found for many weeks, 
and by the time your unmarked body is found, there will be no trace of the poison in your system. It will appear that the humiliation of a defeat has caused your heart to give out. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a plane to catch. Forfeiting, give me your gun. Yes, boss. Take Preston to the car and see that he is settled in. Yes, boss. Oh, one moment. You had better take care of the formula in case our friend here decides to try something heroic. Yes, boss. Of course, Miss Maple, you will appreciate that I cannot let you have the antidote now. Um, but what about that sporting chance you promised me? At least, will you answer one final question? Certainly. Mm, I take it that you have found out what Valvertine has done with the Countess de Zim's diamonds? Yes, they're in a safety deposit box in a Zurich bank. And you have the account details? Box number 39 in the room of Rottenheron. Excellent work. <laughs> Take your filthy hats off me! Now, now, Fräulein. Language. Good to see you, Detective Inspector Lestrange. And Penny, are you all right? Right as nine pence, Jean. Sorry we're a bit late. The overnight rain made the sides of the shaft a little more slippery than I expected. But the inspector turned up on time, as arranged, so I had no problem getting out. And all that bracken we had put in made it a very soft landing. But I heard you screaming in agony! It was only a four or five foot drop. We know you suffer with vertigo and wouldn't look over the edge. So it was just a case of making you think I was seriously hurt. Fantastic performance, even if I do say so myself. So, all this was a mere charade, a silly child's game. To what end? I have done nothing wrong. The Frau Doctor is the one you want. Arrest her. She is the thief. Shall I make the introductions? Um, please do. Allow me to introduce you to Mrs Shirley Hames, a private detective. You have led Scotland Yard and Interpol a merry dance for a great many years, Fräulein. We had our suspicions that you were responsible for hundreds of daring jewel thefts, but you were always two steps ahead of us. Then Mrs Hames suggested the only way to gather enough evidence to convict you was to offer you a way of getting riches beyond even your wildest dreams. To become your partner, as it were, with my two dear friends, Miss Maple and Miss Penfold, I devised the idea of the ancient alchemist's formula. Naturally, in order to make you want to join up with me, I had to convince you that I was a master criminal in my own right. And so, over the past year, we set up a number of apparently daring jewel thefts. Then we put out a rumour that I was close to finding the gold-making formula. Naturally, you couldn't pass up the opportunity of endless wealth, and so you came to me to offer your services. Of course, you are proud to detail the thefts which you have carried out in order to impress me enough to take you on as a partner, and you are more than happy enough to suggest that I could put the formula in your deposit box for safekeeping. So not only do we have your confession to many of your crimes, but we will be able to return much of what you stole to the rightful owners. However, as I have not been poisoned, at least you will not hang. But you will be spending a great deal of time at His Majesty's pleasure. I do not think so! Stop her! Good boy, Preston. Curse you all! <laughs> I think it's time to put Fräulein Falfertine under safe lock and key. Indeed. <clears throat> I think we all deserve a nice cup of tea. And I think Preston deserves a very large bone. <coughs> 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 <coughs>